Hi everyone, Caitlin Stavlaski here, Assistant Director of the Institute of Beauty and Wellness in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're so glad you could join us on our YouTube Beauty Care Series. Um, today we have Robert Grimes, who's gonna be going over braiding with us. Um, don't forget, we have product giveaways happening during this too. So Robert will pick his favorite question um, for those of you posting, and we'll also include another winner who can contact admissions to pick out their own prize. Today, our guest speaker is Robert. He began his career at Innovata Institute more than 10 years ago and has continued to work with the product since. His tenacity for learning, patient personality, and passion for hairdressing has allowed him to explore and hone his skills. He's been awarded the Naha Awards in 2015 of Hairstylist of the Year and Contemporary Classic winner. His work has been featured in other industry shows, including Aveda Master Jam, Congress, and Hair Expo Australia. Up next, Robert Grimes. Can y'all hear me now? Hopefully, yes. Maybe. I really hope so. OK. Uh, so I uh, have to quickly set up my video again. This is awkward, because now I'm on my phone. Um, okay, hold on. Get my stuff all set up for a second time now that I had to switch. We got this all um, figured out earlier, but apparently everything just decided not to work on me. Um, so what we're going to be going over today, whilst I figure out my setup, um, is some braiding. Um, and some of those things. Um, I think that works for the moment. Uh, so with braids, I really like I really like to braid. I taught myself how to braid, um, and it was tough, but I finally got it done. You know, uh, I spent a lot of time in uh, my room with a mannequin with the TV on and a little mannequin stand hooked up to my coffee table in New York, um, just going to town until finally uh, braids started happening. Then, um, let's see if I got this to where I can, I think I got my setup correct now. Uh, then after that, I started, uh, do a little braids here and there for people and for guests and stuff like that. Can y'all still hear me? I'm really hoping so. Um, but awesome. Okay, cool, great. Um, I just got I just got the the, the, the thumbs up that y'all can hear me. Uh, so I um. I was in New York, and then after that, I went to uh, uh, San Diego. And from San Diego, I went to Austin, 
worked under Alan Ruiz, the styling director, and then I met through him Antoinette, and then Antoinette gave me uh, opportunities to work with her after seeing some of my braids and some of my work. Um, hi guys. Uh, to, 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 to work with her fashion week. And then my first show with her was um, Master Jam Berlin. And then I've worked Master Jam in Congress and fashion week with her ever since. And that's been about Seven, eight years now. Gosh, wow, how time flies. I, every time I think about that, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm getting old. Uh, but, you know, hey, it's better than the alternative, right? Um, hi, guys. I'm still, I, I've, got, I've got my chat on a different screen so that I can actually uh, talk to y'all back. Um, so with that, I figured I'd share some of the information that I have for y'all with some braids. Um just some really basic techniques for braids and then we can go over some products and I can answer any questions that we might have on um, product and sectioning and braids. Um, and in the, in the meantime, I'll demo some things. If you've got, um, if you've got uh, questions about how I'm using my fingers, or if you want me to slow down or zoom in on something, just let me know here, and we'll um, and we'll and we'll get we'll get started with that. Um, my favorite kind of braid. All right, so so Miss Desiree Masasha also asked me what my favorite kind of braid is. Honestly, um, I love to cornrow. I always have because it was one of the first ones that I taught. I like any braid that really attaches to the scalp um, because it gives, it gives structure to the, to the, uh, to the finished look. And that's really cool. Um, but uh, really, I like any I like any braid that enhances the beauty of, of our guests that that gives them what they really want. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all have so many questions already. Uh, uh, so, Cheyenne, uh, how long does it? How much does it typically take to complete various styles of braids? So that's that depends on the complexity of the braid, right? So if it's a lot of intricate braids then that takes a long time. If it's a long, fluffy braid, if it's an upstyle for a wedding, that can take anywhere between half an hour to an hour and a half, uh, depending on the prep and uh, primarily the prep that goes into the braiding and the, uh, also the difficulty of the braid. Um, and when it comes to braiding, uh, I'd have to say the easiest type um, with, uh, I'm answering was a twist the barber. Uh, the easiest types of braids to do for beginners are rope braids, and I'll show you and I'll demo some of those because it's only a two-strand braid instead of a three- or four-strand braid, and um, they're they're a little easier to master, and um, you can, with proper manipulation and proper product, you can make them look really nice, too. Um, so that being said, uh, how about... Uh, we get started with just some basics with braiding. Um, so some of the the basic concepts of braids: there's two strand braid, there's three strand braid, there's four strand braids, five strand braids. You can you can have as many braids as you want. After four strands and five strands, that's more in the world of weaving. So um, and although I do have a class on rope braid weaving and advanced feed in uh, braids and feed in cornrows where you add hair and all that stuff. I like to stick to the two, three, and sometimes four strand braids when I get into teaching. Um, the, the, the simplest braids, a couple I'm going to show you. Uh, first, we'll start with the two strand braid as a rope braid. All these braids can be applied to the scalp as well. Um, and the, the Miss Hannah, the, the hardest braid that I've ever done is called the infinity braid or the zipper braid, but it's an on the scalp version and I do it in cornrows. So I do them super thin and small. Um, 
I had another mannequin that had an example when I took it out because I thought I was going to use that mannequin. But then I remembered that I just did a balayage class and uh, I thought I'd use this beautifully colored mannequin for y'all instead of, um, of a monochrome mannequin. Or a mannequin. Um, so uh, with, the, with the on the scalp two strand braids, you can get the texture of a, a cornrow um, and then you can... And then it doesn't take as much uh, uh, effort as a, an actual cornrow would. Um, and um, sectioning is probably, to answer your question, Desiree, sectioning is probably the most important part of braiding when it comes to uh, multiple braid looks or cornrow looks. Um, I spend more time sectioning out and pre-sectioning out my work before I'll actually start or spend time on my work. Um, especially if the, if the partings are going to be done in, uh, or seen in the finished result. So um, for corner looks, the partings are part of your art. They're, they're part of the look, they're part of the finished result. They're half of your work. If you look at a, a head of braids, if they have more than four to six braids on the head, the sections and the partings are the are are also they're the co-stars right so you've got clean braids but then the partings they have to be clean as well otherwise if i see a parting that all the partings are are, are kind of inconsistent then to me when i'm looking at a photo or when i'm judging a competition photo with braids in them i'm looking at them and i'm like they don't know what they're doing um or that's messy work uh and um that's if if i however see partings that are consistently messy uh then, then I think that might be part of their actual intention, but it's that's a that's a hard thing to to get across. So clean partings for me when it comes to multiple braids on a head uh, always look the best. Um, do you braid on short hair? If so, is it challenging? Uh, Miss Shine, yes, I do braid on short hair, and yes, it is challenging. What I'll do with short hair is I'll actually take feed in hair and uh, I'll start the braid with the feed in hair and then the hair that's longer that you feed in actually helps you uh, braid down the rest of the shorter hair. Um, and then what type of braid do I wish I could learn? This is from Margo, uh, but there's always more to learn, right? Yes, there is always more to learn. Um, I'm actually learning uh, some really interesting techniques with rope braiding right now. I'll, sh I'll get the book and I'll show you. Um, it's <laughs> got this out just for y'all. Um, I don't know if y'all can read. I don't know if y'all can see this. This is um, so. This is basically rope braids, but what they do is they take rope braids and they feed them through other rope braids, right? And so you can make really cool designs out of this. And I've actually um, I'm learning how to translate looks like this into hair uh, because that's what that's what it is it's art right it's so you can take anything beautiful and uh, make it art um, I have created my own braid I called it the dinosaur braid um, because it, it it stands up on the head and it looks like the the, the spikes of a of a triceratops or the stegosaurus or whatever a stegosaurus not a triceratops um, from this autumn seed answer your question uh, and the types of combs, gosh, these questions are all over. I love it. Um, and Miss McKenna, Miss McKenna Schaefer, I do both men and women braids. I don't just do one; I do both. So I'm gonna get to some some braids now, so we can uh, go through this because I don't want to just sit down and answer all these questions without actually showing you anything. That would be kind of pointless. Um, so here, I've got my beautiful mannequin head, right? So the type of comb I like to use is um, a YS Park, right? So this is a tail comb. It's a YS Park. This is their extra long. Um, I like their extra long because it allows me the capability. This one I really like because uh, as a colorist, I can fit the entire foil over the side of it. <laughs> and if the foil if the foil goes over the end of my tail comb, it drives me batty. Um, so let me see if I can get better angle here. 
There we go. All right, so we got some hair. So the first braid that I really want to just show y'all is probably the easier braid. It's um, it's a rope braid. <laughs> and I'm going to do it two different ways. First, we're going to do the uh, regular rope braid, which is off the scalp. And then I'm going to show you the on the scalp uh, version. So a rope braid is a two-strand braid. All right, so we've got two strands here. One, two, All right? And then what you do is you want to twist them in the same direction and then place them or braid them in the opposite direction, All right? So it's a twist and I pass it over. Did everyone see that? Because here comes a twist, watch. Twist, same direction, pass it over. Twist, pass it over. Twist, pass it over. So I'm twisting that way. And then this braid is going over this way. So when I continue, it looks like a rope, which is why they call it a rope braid, right? Um, now, the, 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 the way I find inspiration is not just through people, but through all forms of uh, fiber art. So not just with knitting, not just with hair, but with, um, you know, boating, knot work. Any, any, any person that's ever done any type of work where they had to make knots to make a net or to, to like fish or to rope climb or to tie down a tent or anything of the sort, that's where a lot of my inspiration comes from for my braids because I'll take those, those interesting looking knots and then I'll try and translate that into a braid. Now, if we want to do that same thing on the scalp, we start off again with two strands, All right? And so we twist to the one direction and then you braid to the opposite direction. Twist to the one direction, braid to the opposite direction. Now here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put everything in one hand and I'm gonna hold my one strand here with these three fingers and then hold my other strand here with these three fingers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist. I don't know if y'all can see that, I'm twisting. <laughs> a little bit closer. So I'm twisting this and then I'm passing that over. All right, so before I twist this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little more hair. All right, did y'all see that? So I added more hair. Now I'm going to twist again. And then I'm passing the opposite direction. Now I've got this strand. Take a little bit of hair. I'm going to twist again. Pass in the opposite direction. You see how that's starting to build on the scalp? That's what we want, right? Um, and I say, Ms. Cheyenne, probably the one person that inspires me uh, back and forth um, a lot. I've got, I've got a couple. I always look for inspiration. So one person that really inspires me is Miss Antoinette Binders. Um, I love her. I love her work. I love how she uh, works with people. Um, she doesn't, she has a clear vision. She's the boss, but she doesn't ever make you feel like you, um, don't have your own voice. She allows you to be creative and it's beautiful. So I'm taking another section here. I'm using my pinky finger just to place it for a second. All right? So I, I still have control of my two braids. I still have control of my two braids. See this, this one's down here and this one's with my thumb fingers. Um, now I take what I'd sectioned out previously and I give it a couple twists. You can, you can twist as tight or as not tight as you want, right? So the tighter you twist, the more the parting is gonna be exposed here, right? So if you twist more, this parting right here will be exposed more. Um, let me give this some tightening, take another section, all right? And twist. Uh, and that is how you would start uh, your on the your on the scalp rope braid. All right? Do we have any questions on on the scalp rope braid? Does anyone want me to demonstrate that again or um, answer any like are there any things about the rope braid that we have questions on? Because I'm gonna take it out.
No? All right, cool. Um, so the a couple questions I'm going to answer right now really quick. Have you ever been frustrated trying to figure out a new braid? This is also from Shiner. If so, how do you cope with it? Um, I get frustrated quite often with trying to figure out something new. Um, the, the thing that we have forgotten to do as a culture is learn how to practice, right? Practice is frustrating. Practice is, is tough, right? So um, luckily, I growing up was a musician and I had to sit down at a piano and I had to practice for hours. And um, you just kind of learn to cope with it. You, you, and I know that's a terrible example and it doesn't really offer any answers. But um, every time you practice, every time you try something, you're going to learn something right? Whether it's what not to do or what to do. And if you can learn from both situations, um, how you failed in creating a braid, you will learn just as much as when you successfully create a braid. So um, not looking at failure as frustrating, but as a, a learning curve, like what did you do? Just take, take mental note of or take physical note of what you actually just did. Um, and that helps with the frustration because then it feels more like you're learning. It doesn't feel like you're just failing. It feels like you're learning, right? Um, for maintaining the control over the hair while it's braiding, it's rare that I braid on clean hair. Um, and by that, I mean, it's rare that I braid on hair that doesn't have product in it. I don't mean that hair is dirty. What I mean is that I, I prepped the hair, I shampooed or blow dried the hair, and then I prepped it with the right product for me. There's a couple products that we love um, that I use specifically just for braiding when it's on the scalp and then a completely different set of products that I use for when it's off the scalp, right? Um, so what I'm going to do, so I got, uh, I got a request to do that one again, so I'm going to do that. Um, and then, <laughs> and then I'm, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do that braid again, and then I'm going to go to another braid. And then the, one of the questions here uh, by Ms. Marlena is, what braid is the most universal? The three-strand braid. The three-strand braid can be on the scalp, off the scalp. It can be visible or invisible. And if you learn the three-strand braid on the scalp and off the scalp, visible and invisible, you're, there's no braid. There's, there's almost any, you can, you can braid about any look that you want. So I'm going to do that again um, so that everyone can see and potentially follow along. All right? So... I'll start a little higher. With my, I have to sit down on the floor and do this, so, I'm just, so it's a little it's a little awkward for me. But I want y'all to get the the right camera angle because um, it's pointless if y'all can't see what I'm doing. All right. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna start a little higher. Here we are. Um, uh, yeah, perfect. So I split it into two. And then I'm going to cross it automatically. Whatever direction you want to cross it over is fine. Just always go in that same direction. So I'm going to twist the opposite direction. And then I cross again. Right. So what I sometimes in class see people do is this. That, that just is a mess when, it, when you're trying to do a whole lot of stuff. So don't do that. Right. Okay. So when you're starting it, Take two strands, cross it, twist, cross it, okay? Da, 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 da. So now I'm going to take some hair from the scalp. What I like to do is I take hair from the scalp all the way over, from one side to the other, the entire section that I'm braiding, one side all the way over. I put that in my pinky, and then I combine it with the hair that it's closest to, which is on the bottom. And then I twist it and I twist it and I twist it. If it's bubbling here, I don't like the I don't like that bubble. So if it's bubbling there, give it a good comb for some tension. And then twist. There we go. And you bring that back over. So now we get to do that again. So we take care from the scalp. Put it on my pinky. I combine it, and I'm gonna twist it. 
and then you braid it. Right. So again, hair from the scalp. And if it untwists a little bit, don't worry about that too much because when we reload new hair into our previous section, we're twisting the snot out of it again anyways. So see how these twists up here? Just twisted all that up there too. So that's good, that's fine. Don't worry if it uncomes a little bit. Now if it, uncomes, if it undoes itself a lot, then yeah, be worried. Um, I give it a pre-twist to make sure this is all tight here. And then I take some new hair here again. And now I twist this into it. There we go. See how beautiful that's starting to look? Now see when I braid it, a little bit of that twist came out here, which is why I give it a twist again before I add new hair. And just to tighten up all this work that I just did, right? Now know that the more you twist it, the tighter it's going to get, right? Which is fine, but at the same time, you don't want to hurt your guest. You twist it, you twist it, you twist it, right? So that is our braid. You can see that I did it tighter than I did the first time because you can start to see the partings. And the partings, if you want a, a, a braid that's like um, got architecture to it, I call it more hood rat. They look a little more hood rat because they're from the hood. You can see the, the partings. Um, then that will give it a more masculine feel. It gives it a more, um, more structured feel. Um, so if you want... If you want to give your look or your braid a little more oomph, um, then let those partings come through. Let them be, let them live. Let them be part of the beauty. Let them be part of the art, right? Now, though, um, so I'm going to take this down again, um, and then we'll, we'll go over some other braids here in a second. Um, switch chairs. There we go. All right, cool. Great. And now I'm going to answer some more questions for you. Um, so what are the no-nos? Like some no-nos for braiding. Uh, the, the best, like the biggest no-no in braiding is not practicing and not knowing what you're going to do before you try and do it. Because if you go into a, a situation with without a plan, um, Having never done it before, and you're not comfortable with braids, then it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a disaster. Um, I always try and tell people to practice their looks, practice their um, up styles before they perform them. And when you get good enough to where you can look at something and you can construct it in your mind, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this kind of braid here, this kind of braid here. It looks like they pulled this through here, and then they did that, and that's how I'm gonna finish it. That takes years to get to that point, but when you get to that point, that's good. But like not practicing your braids, if you know you have a braid look coming up, that's probably the, like the biggest no-no I could think of. Um, so combining to just one section or splitting on both sides. So Marlena, I'm combining it all in just one section, um, and I'm twisting, I'm twisting, I'm twisting it together with the previous section from before. Uh, but it's the two-strand braid, so it's the bottom section of hair that the new section gets added into. Uh, so I've, I've done that one twice already. So I'm going to move on from the two-strand braid, and we're going to go into three-strand braids, into uh, what becomes a French braid, and then what becomes a, uh, um, a Dutch braid, also known as a visible braid and an invisible braid. Um, and then a, another question here. So with the rope braid, do you only add in hair on one side, uh, or does it change with the amount of strands that you're braiding? So I'll add in hair from the middle, um, and and when the braid itself twists, you're adding to both sides technically, right? Um, but you're always adding to the bottom section. But since they twist, you're adding to both braids eventually. Like both both sections of hair get hair added to it. Uh, but since they're switching spots every single time, both sections get hair added to it. Um, and then I braided this one just down the middle. You can also braid it all the way over to one side uh, of your parting, and that creates a really interesting effect. Uh, it's a really beautiful effect to, to control the side of the braid uh, that, that the or the side of the parting that your braid is on. is a, is a really beautiful technique uh, that I think can add uh, a lot of 
um, just there's a lot of movement and beauty because it's it, it takes your braiding to another level instead of just having them always in the middle. Um, so next we're gonna go over uh, just some basic three strand braids uh, for French braiding. Uh, French braiding is um, it. You don't have to do it like me. I do it differently because I teach people how to braid and this is typically a hands-on class. I'm gonna show you how I typically teach people to braid a French braid. Uh, some people braid with their hands up. Some people braid with their hands down when they braid. The people, when they when they braid with their palms towards the scalp, I call it like a monkey, I call it like a monkey braid because it looks like they've got like a monkey grip on them where they're like grabbing the hair here. And some people braid with their palms up. Um, I don't have a I don't have a clever term for that, but that's just what I call it. Um, so we're gonna go do some French braiding real quick. Ow! That was my elbow. Okay. So with a French braid, it's a three strand braid, right? Make sure y'all can see this. So three strand braid. I part my hair into three. Do, 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 just like that. It's super simple. And then my hand that's free is um, this hand. I grab the strand that's closest to it. So with my three strands here, this strand is the closest to the hand that's free. Right? And then I open up my palm and I twist the other two sections over my middle finger. Right? Now again, I have three strands. One, two, three. This little guy. This hand is free, so I'm going to grab the strand that's closest to it. Then I'm going to open my palm, and I'm going to twist this over the middle finger. Okay? Now, I've done that twice. I have to do that at least twice. Uh, otherwise, if I added hair now, it would just make one of these sections super big. So I have to do it one more time before I can add hair. So this hand is free. Grab the strand of hair that's closest to it, right here. And then I twist this over my middle finger and into the palm. And notice how all the hairs are coming down. All, all three sections are coming down the bottom of my strand, the bottom of my hand right here, right? So now I can add hair. I'm gonna add hair from this side. I always add it to the middle, just because of how I braid. So I've got a strand of hair here, got a strand of hair here, and I've got a strand of hair here. You see that? One, two, three. So I always add to the middle. So I'm gonna take some hair, and I'm going to comb it out with my fingers and put it into the middle strand. Clean everything up. And it all goes down to the bottom of my hand. So again, I take this here and I'm gonna twist over the middle finger. So here are my three strands. One strand here, one strand here, one strand here. I'm gonna take care from the scalp uh, you can use your pinky finger, you can use a thumb, you can scoop. The thing is, try and get your parting as clean as possible. So with your fingers, you can get a pretty clean party. Right? It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, comb it out a little bit, and then I put it into the middle strand. So here's my closest to my free hand, this side, over here. So it grabs this one because this is the closest one to it. I always take the easy way out. All right, so I grab this and then I twist these over my middle finger. Take a section of hair, comb it out with my fingers, put it in my middle strand. It took me forever to learn how to teach this. It took me forever to learn how to braid it. Take a section, put it in the middle strand, right? So we can see how when we continue doing this, this creates a three strand on the scalp braid, more commonly known as a French braid. Um, and some people call it an invisible braid. Some people call it, uh, um, people call it all sorts of things. Uh, three strand on the scalp braid, like it's just no matter what it is. Uh, this is a technique for it no matter its name. Now when we come to the bottom of the hair, a lot of times what we end up with is, um, yes, uh, Cheyenne, when I, when I section sometimes, 
um, for updos. I purposefully don't want the, the parts to be seen. I will um, section messy on purpose, yes. Uh, so I'm just gonna finish this. Now what I'm gonna do is to show you what I do to prevent saggy braids, saggy bottom braids is what I call them because they're saggy on the bottom. Uh, so I braid all the way down and then I get to the end of the hair. Now, almost there. So we get to the bottom and we've got just a little bit of hair left. But what we don't want is we don't want saggy bottom braids. So what we have to do is we have to continue braiding down her neck as if she still has hair to braid, right? So I'm just gonna continue braiding against her neck as if she still has hair to braid. And the reason for that is it takes about four inches of braid for the, 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 the higher braid to lock in, right? So this won't lock in until this is braided. So you can't lift and over direct your hand out before you've got four inches here. Okay, so uh, now you can see from the side, she, it's not sagging at all, right? It's no, no saggy braid here. Uh, so when you're finished with your braid down to the bottom, you have to continue braiding for at least four inches uh, before you can uh, lift away from the neck or the scalp. Um, so that's just a simple French braid, simple three strand braid. Um, and a few more questions. Uh, let's see, this is where I'm at when adding here. Uh, da, 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 da. And do you like to braid on certain hair colors? I like to braid on dimensional hair. So the thing about braiding is what makes it beautiful is the way that the rounds and the ribs what the like the visible bumps or where the the hair is movement that movement what makes a beautiful braid is being able to see that movement where it goes from the parting into uh, the intersection of the hair and the only way you can really see that is with good lighting and with um, dimensional color so dimensional color being highlights balayage shadow root um, anything anything of that sort so I, the color of hair that i like just it, it doesn't matter it just as long as it's dimensional color um let's see any tips for uh corn rowing for for keeping smaller braids very tight and balanced so when it comes to keeping your braids tight and balanced and i'm looking at lily Lily, when it comes to keeping keeping your cornrows tight and balanced, that's all about tension, the amount of tension and keeping your hand tension. So and, and not losing not losing tension on any of the three strands that you've got. If you've got two strands that are loose um, and one that's really tight and you keep braiding like that, you're gonna end up with a braid that looks more like an S shape instead of like a proper cornrow. Or if you've got um, two that are really tight and one that's really loose, uh, then you, you end up with this weird loop every now and then. Um, and that's all about tension. That's, that's all that is. It's tension. It comes along with practice and then reestablishing your tension when you are switching hands from hair to hair. And I'll show you that when we do cornrows in a little bit. Um, how many braids would you say you know how to do? Oh, God. I, I, I couldn't. Uh, I'll say I've got under my belt at least a dozen good braids. And that's all I've ever needed. Um, cause again, braiding after that kind of gets into not, not work and then weaving. Um, and then my least favorite braid, um, is the waterfall braid <laughs> cause, cause everyone asked for it and it was just, I, I just don't like it. I'll show y'all how to do it. I just don't like it. Um, uh, cramping hands and braiding so much. If you know you're going to be braiding, um, I take a couple ibuprofen. To be honest, uh, uh, in, in, uh, level up on your on your turmeric and your cinnamon uh, intake. If you know you're going to be braiding a lot, if it lot a lot a lot, because both of those things are really good for inflammation and it'll it'll help with inflammation. And when it comes to cramping, also the other thing you need to do is drink a lot of water. If your if your muscles are cramping, they don't have enough water. Um, 
so I've got, okay, I don't want to waste too much time uh, uh, just, just talking. Um, so what I want to show y'all now is how I cornrow. Um, it's a little different, but it is effective. And the reason it's effective is because it's the way that my hands can create consistent tension throughout the entire braid. And that's the most important thing when it comes to cornrowing. It's not necessarily, um, you know, my hands are this way or your hands are this way or this is how I do it. Or something. None of that matters. What really matters in, the, in, a, in a cornrow is a consistency. A consistent tension is going to get you the best result, right? So let me show you how I do that now. Um, first thing I'm going to do is get a nice little section for y'all. So I'm going to clip all this away, clip all this away, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a corner row here, and I'm going to go all the way forward, okay, because I want y'all to be able to see my hands. Um, might have to futz with the light here for a minute. Let me go turn on my lights, make sure they're good for you really fast. All right, sorry about that. Okay. Um, so now with this, let's see if I can make sure you got a good angle to really see my fingers. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start here at this apex. I like to start at uh, the apex of a... Uh, of a section and then work my way out wider because I think that that is a um, more elegant way to start the braid. Um, really, this here, control this so that it's not bothering me. Sanitize. My teacher used to make me say when anytime we dropped our combs, we had to say sanitize. We all said it, and then none of us did it. <laughs> oh, the things you do when you're in school. Okay, so we're going to keep that there. Now, I've got my section here. Okay, so I'm going to take my starting section. I'm going to split it into three. Watch how I do this. Did y'all see that? Probably not. I'm going to show you all again. Split it into three. I'm really trying to get my good camera angle here. Let me see if I can get that. So there, I've got my three. Then I start to braid two times before I start adding any hair. When I add hair, I'm pinching this whole section. And I come from this side and with my fingernail. I'm going to scoop up what I want, put the rest inside of my two little fingers. I have to reestablish my tension here and pick up more hair. Reestablish my tension here and pick up more hair. Reestablish my tension here. See how I'm reestablishing my tension? When I grab it, I'm not just like whipsy whipsy daisy. I reestablish my tension. And then this is the middle strand, so I go under the middle strand and grab the outside strand and at the same time pinch all the available hair in my section. And then I carve off what I want.
carve out what I want. Put everything else right here. Reestablish my tension. Carve out what I want. Now watch, see how this is loose right there? Maybe y'all can see this. This is loose right here. Reestablishing my tension, watch this little bubble. Watch this piece right there. Watch that piece. You see how that went in? It's because I reestablished my tension. Carve out what I want. Carve out what I want. Carve out what I want. Now, so I'm doing the braid in the center of my two partings, right? I'm not doing it all to one side, um, which is, is fine because uh, there's another way to do it, which is off to one side of the parting, which is a, a, a beautiful way to accentuate the partings in your, in your work and to really make them show. Uh, again, that's half, half the work, half the beauty is clean partings, right? So I finished this and the same rule applies for um, the end of the braid, which is if I don't want this to lift off the scalp, I have to continue braiding as if I'm cornrowing on her face. Like she's got hair here to cornrow. And I have to keep doing this for about four inches. So if you notice, look, I'm cornrowing basically over her face in this direction. Now I've got four inches. Now I can lift and braid. Braid is normal. All right. Boom down. Okay. So that's just a regular corn row. Um, just a that's just a regular corn row right down the middle of the of the section. Do y'all have any questions? I'm going to demonstrate that again, but I'm going to do it pulled to one side. So y'all can see what I'm talking about with the pull to one side. Um, I'm just going to see if I've got any questions. <laughs> we said the same thing. Awesome. Um, so Cheyenne, you asked, it's somewhat hard sometimes to make each piece equal. Do you have any tips on keeping consistent and equal pieces? Yes. Uh, that all has to do with the tool that you're using to create your subsections. So if you're, I'm just going to adjust my camera angle. There we go. If you're using your fingernail, the nail that you're using to subsection has to be long. Like your nails become your tail comb, basically. Now I just clipped all my nails off last night. I forgot. Uh, I, I don't know what I was thinking and I don't have any of the fingernail that I typically do when I do braiding work. Um, but it's the tool that you use when you are creating your braid, no matter what tool that is, uh, creating consistent subsections is the most important part for consistent sectioning and consistent braids. Uh, some people try and go off of the density of the subsection that they're taking, but then that just gets, that gets way too complicated and then that really only applies when you're dealing with subsections that are changing in width quite rapidly, like when you're braiding in um, a, a triangle uh, in a rather large section. Uh, but still, the subsectioning really is, um, as long as you keep your subsectioning equal from part to part, you're going to have a consistent and beautiful braid. Um, so now, I'm going to go into... Uh, uh, the pull braid to one side. I'm just, I've, got, I've got three screens that I'm looking at here to make sure everything's going okay. So I'm trying not to, I might look a little scatterbrained because I'm, I'm bouncing from one screen to the next, making sure I'm catching all the, um, all the questions. 
and and make sure that y'all got all the, the, the proper lighting and angles and everything too. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same cornrow, um, but now I'm gonna show you a pull braid. So with this, this is in more so the middle, right? I'm gonna show you a braid that is pulled all the way over to one side. And the reason I'm gonna do that again is because I feel like that is just more of an advanced technique where uh, braiders get to show off a little more of their capability um, and a little more of their skill when they're when they're braiding. So the first thing again I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure this section stays nice and out of my way. If this was on a person um, and if this was a, a cornrow pattern, this would all be pre-sectioned, and I wouldn't have to worry about constantly. Um, getting the extra hair out of my way because it would it would all be sectioned out already. Um, make our little Veda Zulu. I lay mine down and then use this like a bobby pin and I slide it in there and it starts. All right, so the fastest way to take a braid out that you've already braided so all this is detached from the scalp here. If you take the highest loop right here, that's not attached to the scalp, so it's not attached to the scalp, and you just give it a tug. Just pull, 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 and the braid comes out. Look at that. Easy, done. Now for detangling this, I have to make sure all this is detangled first for, for taking it out. And then I come from underneath, I brace here, and I comb up. Underneath, and I comb up. And it all comes out super quick, super easy. See, look at that. No time at all. And I, uh, you don't have to sit there and you don't have to pick and 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 pick at each individual uh, cornrow. Um, how often do you cornrow? Uh, I cornrow probably not every day. Not every day. I'm not going to lie. I probably do cornrows at least once, twice a week before, um, before I got quarantined. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do really, I just gotta, what I'm going to do really quick is, is show you the, the, um, the pull braid to one side. So this, everything's going to come down. Um, same thing when I start at three here, now here. I pull everything down to one side when I do it. And this all gets added to one side. You see that? How my subsection, I'm purposefully pulling down. I'm purposefully pulling down with all the hair that I'm adding. Purposefully pulling down. Right, so my fingers are over the um, the part. My fingers are exactly on top of where I want my braid to end up. Right, so and I did this. I did this pretty quick, but uh, I just want y'all to just want y'all to see it because this is, I think, really important for um, braiders to have this in their skill set. Right. See, I reestablished my tension. There we go. All right. And now you see the difference in where this braid is? Um, and where the other braid is? Is this braid is not in the middle. This braid is to the side of a party. So I'm going to take the mannequin head off and I'll show you. See, this braid here is on one side and the other side of the parting is completely clean, right? 
and that's more of a that's the way you can can like show off your skill with a braid just have it pulled to one side um so nails yeah nails definitely make it a little easier uh with that i've uh my time's just about up are there any other questions that we have i didn't get to i didn't get to the product i just showed you a braid and i just answered a whole bunch of questions i hope um I hope this was. I hope that was adequate. I hope that was adequate, and I hope I, I hope you all learned something, or at least a few tips and tricks and whatnot. Um, so, with the products that I like to use generally, is um, is um, Fomolient is really one of my top products for for braiding, and then. Uh, um, top products for, for braiding and then um, flaxseed and confixer. Those are my three for cornrows. Um, excuse me. And then let's see. Uh, so I, I have to pick a winner, really anyone in the live chat. I'm going to go with, okay, hold on. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I want to say I want to go with who asked the most questions or who made the, made my job a little harder with questions. Um, but I know, I know I saw, uh, Miss Cheyenne's name a lot, so I'll go with her. How about that? She was very interactive with me. Uh, okay, so congrats. Um, and I hope, I, hope, I hope that answered all your questions. If you don't, if, if you didn't get the questions answered that you wanted to see, just hit me up on my Instagram. You can private message me. I try and respond to as many message, uh, messages that I get as possible. Uh, my handle is hair by R Grimes 86. If you have any questions about uh, product, if you want me to show you anything again, just let me know and I'll do my best. I try. I try and be pretty good about that. But that's that's uh, that's I guess that's all I got for you today. So uh, yeah, um, I think that's the class. <laughs> uh,